One of the reasons why I love Asus's Zephyrus Duo machines so much is the second display. It lets you be so much more productive while still on the go. There are some drawbacks to that design though, like how the keyboard gets just pushed all the way down to the very edge of the machine, the trackpad gets squished into a little corner, and of course the rather extortionate price tag that a machine like this will set you back. Also it requires you to buy this machine, replacing your current laptop that you might actually prefer anyway. So what if you could attach or retrofit more displays to your existing machine? Well, that would be pretty great, right? Well, enter the, uh, the P2S, a clamp-on dual screen attachment that fits most 13 to 16 inch laptops. This thing features two fold-out 12 inch IPS 60 hertz displays with a quoted 220 nit peak brightness, 1000 to 1 contrast ratio, and actually in my testing, a remarkably color accurate with a delta E of well under 2, and cover a little over 100% of the sRGB spectrum. So genuinely pretty impressive there. The key thing here has to be the cost. How much does this set you back? £460! Well, that's as much as an entire budget laptop. Well, for that price, this thing better be amazing. I'll start with compatibility. Physically, this has a ratcheting mechanism that lets it clamp onto any laptop display. It has six total wedged rubber feet that grab your display so that it won't damage anything. Although, you'll notice that the ratchet only grips on the top side, so it can be a, a little loose around the bottom. As for the weight, well this comes in at 3.3 um, kilograms, or not far off twice the weight of an entire Asus Zephyrus G15. And that weight is all hanging off of the thin display and its hinge. Fantastic. Now, luckily they did think of that. They thought about it and knowing that a laptop's hinge won't hold all of that weight, so they included an adjustable kickstand. That's this thing, the, the thin twig that can slide out and adjust to what height you want, and uh, yeah. The hinge at the top that holds that little kickstand in place easily slides out of the way, rendering the stand functionally useless. It's also only on one side, which isn't great for even support, meaning your display will twist itself, helping to shorten the lifespan of your primary display. On the technical side, that's honestly the more frustrating part. In theory, you can use this with a single USB-C cable. I mean, it only wants a maximum of 15 watts of power, that's what the included US power brick that came with this can output. So as long as your laptop can output that alongside having DisplayPort alt mode, you should be all good. I said should there though, because I tried to use this on the Zephyrus G15. But the best I could get was the right display to work about 10% of the time. After an hour of troubleshooting, I found it's because that is an all AMD laptop and it doesn't like pushing two display signals over a single port. And when I connected the second USB-C cable to the other DisplayPort Alt Mode port on the laptop and the other USB-C port on the bottom of the screens, well, it did detect that second display, but it wouldn't actually display anything. I then switched to the Zephyrus Duo, which yes, means I now have a total of four active displays here, it's great, uh, and managed to get it working. Once it is working, the first thing you'll probably notice is just how dim these tiny 12 inch screens are. You can access the separate on-screen menus using the plus and minus keys at the top, and then you can turn up the brightness and also the separate option for backlights, although make sure you don't go too high, especially on the brightness setting, as you will make the screens unusably blown out. I found that setting backlight to 100 and the brightness to 50 ended up being the best overall result for me. The next thing you'll probably notice 
is just how small they are. Even with 100% scaling in Windows, it's hard to get much use out of them. Sure, you can stick a video or you know, a file explorer window there, but for any actual work, I would struggle to use them for much. If you're interested, I found that the response times were painfully slow. The average initial response time was 18.6 milliseconds, which admittedly is only just outside the 60 hertz refresh rate window, but that doesn't make it any good. The panel is definitely using pulse width modulation to control the backlight brightness, even though it's set to 100% here, which isn't great, as the light level fluctuates between frames, as you can see on this graph, that sort of pulsing up and down, even a flat line, not really what you want to see. The bigger problem though was the latency where it took around 50 milliseconds for the display to render a new frame or to show and that you know an action that you've input to actually happen on screen that's frankly an eternity now sure you won't be gaming on these anyway but that kind of latency just doesn't make for the best user experience in general honestly i'm struggling to work out who this is for this isn't useful while actually traveling can you imagine cracking this thing out on a train or a plane? <laughs> no chance. So this is only for when you get to your destination and have a desk available. So why not just bring something like this instead? This is a 1080p 16 inch uh, 60 hertz touchscreen external display. This one even has an internal battery that will keep it running for six hours at 250 nits. It won't ruin your laptop's main display or hinges. It's so, so much lighter. It's thinner. It's much easier to actually carry with you. It's bigger, so it's more useful and practical and so, so much cheaper. Why buy this mess? when you can buy an external display like this instead. If you are dead set on something like this, I would still advise against this one because it could be done so much more elegantly. Why is it so damn heavy? Why do the fold out screens fold out panel first, meaning that you have to carry around the faux leather carrying case so that you don't wreck the panels? Why do they fold out to only barely past flat? This should be able to fold much tighter, especially with panels this small. Why are the cables so long? Who needs a like 1.2 meter cable when the displays are literally strapped to your laptop? Why is the ratcheting mechanism only tight at the top, enough that the whole thing can slide off the bottom side of your laptop? I mean, for 500 pounds, I'd expect better, a lot better. They don't even give you a place to store the cables in the damn thing. Didn't even notice that. Well, that's stupid. So yeah, that's um, my thoughts. I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about the, actually, I didn't tell you the name. It's, uh, it's Quamzy, which I guess describes that thing quite well. Uh, the Quamzy P2S, what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. They were also very insistent that I don't give you a link to Amazon for you to buy this thing, only to their own website, so I guess there won't be an Amazon affiliate link in the description, there'll be a link to them if you're interested. Uh, otherwise, uh, that's kind of it from me. If you want to see more videos like this one from me, then hit the subscribe button, turn the bell notification icon. I have plenty of other videos on the channel you can check out as well on the end cards. If you want to support me rambling and raving, then feel free to check out the links in the description to places like Amazon and Overclock UK. Uh, there's also a lot of other stuff. There's merch hoodies and t-shirts like this one. You can become a YouTube member and support me directly or become a patron and do the same. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it really. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next video.